Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Andy at Lawrenceville Garage. In our last video, we showed a project where we built an engine cart for an engine or a transmission that you could pull out of your donor vehicle and uh, what to do with it once you unloaded it. And that is to get it on that cart so you can push it around your garage or shop and kind of keep things out of the way and keep it neat. The next phase in that project will be to turn that into an engine test run stand. But before we can do that, there's one important thing you got to do before you can start it. You've got to eliminate the vats on your PCM so that you can even start it. So the purpose of the test run stand is not to fully dial it in. It's just to get it running so that you can assess it to determine if there's any funny noises, leaks, and things like that. So first step is to eliminate the vats on that PCM so the engine will start on your test run stand. So that's what this video is about. So this video is going to be part one, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to build the benchtop harness for the PCM to connect to your PC. The second video, part two, will be actually showing you some free software and programs that are available online that you can use to delete the VATS. So let me show you what I got going. Here are all the components that we're gonna use. Uh, this is just a little box, a uh, plastic box I bought off of Amazon. In fact, in the description below the video, I'll put a list of all my components here, where I got them and how much they were. Uh, just a plastic box. I think it was about $7 as a lid to it. I cut a hole in the lid two places to uh, mount switches. And this is so that I can have a switch for my uh, constant power to the PCM itself. And then this other switch would act as a ignition switch because you'll need to have both. Uh, I've got a diagnostic port, OBD port uh, mounted right there. Now this one happens to be new. I would suggest grabbing one from the salvage yard. They're all over the place. I had one, but it turned out to be uh, an older model, and it would not work, uh, probably OBD-1. But I've got this one uh, mounted to the side here, and there's just a hole for a few wires to go through. This is the Dondle. Uh, it's a pretty cool device if you look it up. Uh, it's fast. It's made for this. It will do the job. Wiring-wise, I uh, really only need four basic wires, and you might wonder, well, where do I get the wiring from? This is all used wiring from an old OBS LS swap. And they were pins that I didn't use, wires that weren't used. So they already have the correct pin for the PCM. Uh, I've got a blue connector here for the PCM. And we'll be taking this apart and removing all the uh, wires that are in there, all the pins, because we don't need those. This will be the power source. Uh, and this one is just simple. 100 to 240 volts, 2 amp max. So that's plenty of amperage for what we're going to use. If you've never taken one of these pin modules apart and that's on your PCM, probably the trickiest part is just getting this cover off because there's there's six pins. It's like that one snapped off. There's two on each end, uh, one here and one here, and this one looks like it broke off. And it's just a matter of pushing them in with either an ice pick or a small screwdriver. I use a small screwdriver and kind of get a little leverage on each one to get it up. And then finally it just, it just comes out. The rubber seal, it's on the inside. It comes out easily. Uh, the two blue clips, there's a little plastic tab. If you look closely, kind of hard to see in this light. On the inside right here and right here, press one in and pull this blue uh, covering up just a little bit. You can press the other side and it'll slip right off. Now, since these are already cut up, which is just fine, we can't really use the pins anyway. I mean, I could splice something on there, but I don't want to do that. The easiest way, instead of pulling these uh, out one at a time, is simply to push them through. And if you push it like that, this comes straight out. Because we're not going to be using any of these little short wires that were provided. I mean, we're going to do our own. Let's get all these out and clean this up so it looks better. Okay, now we've got all the wires out. And we just need to clean this up a little bit. And this is a stack of what we've got left. And even those I will probably keep. You never can tell in the future uh, when something might come in handy. Okay, here are the four wires connected to the connection to the PCM. You'll see we've got the number one pin for the ground, which is the PCM ground. Number 19 is our pink wire for our switched ignition. And number 19, 20 is next to it. And that's the constant battery power, and that's 12 volt. It's orange, or orange with black stripe. And then down here on the bottom, number 58 
is our serial data and it's purple. Now we'll connect these wires all together, including the OBD port and to the switches. Okay, I've got everything wired up, but uh, I'll go over it quickly, kind of how I wired it. It's pretty simple. And I will post up a diagram at the end of the video that'll show you how everything is connected so it can be a little more clear to you. But the switches I used have three prongs or three wires. Uh, you can buy them with the wires or without. These happen to come with them. So automatically the uh, black wires obviously are the ground. If you didn't have the wires, the, the tabs for the ground would be gold and the other two are silver. But with the ground, there's actually five ground wires because you're running the two from the switches together. You're running the ground from your PCM and the ground from the two grounds from your OBD port. So you're running all those together. So all the grounds come together and all those grounds come together on the negative side or the ground side of your, of your power cable. The power on the power cable attaches to the two center tabs. So you've got your grounds all connected to the top, just the power from each switch to the red power coming to from your electricity, coming from your wall outlet or your electrical source. And then the third ones, these are what are actually being triggered. So on this side, this goes to the orange wires, which are for constant power. And on this side, it's going to the pink wire, which is your key on power. So to kind of, before I button all this up, uh, I want to show you uh, a way to test to make sure these are connected properly. Turn this light out, and I've got a voltmeter here, and I'm going to turn it to 20 volts. And let's see, I think it's ringing. Let's see this a little easier. I'm going to plug the unit into the wall. Okay, it's got power. Now, get this where I can hit the switches. Okay, if you can see the you can see the voltmeter from there. I press this, touch this to the ground, and this will the end wire here, number 20, that was the key on. Okay? So you see right now it's showing negative, so it's basically zero. I'm going to turn that on. The little light comes on, and when I touch it to 20, you get 12 volts. Turn it off. Negative. Turn it back on. Turn it on, you get 12. Now the key on. It's the number 19 lead here. And when I touch it, it's negative. When I turn it on, touch it, it goes to 12 volts. So off, there's no power to it, and turn it on, and there is. So each of the switches work. Now let's put it together. I want the box to be big enough so the wiring wouldn't have to be crimped in place. It'll go in easily. It's got a seal on the bottom side, so although it shouldn't have a problem with moisture at all, it will uh, easily be sealed from dirt and dust. Okay, now the unit's put together. It's complete. We need to put this back on. So now it's ready to go. Except I disconnected, and this is what it looks like. The OBD port is connected and the dongle is in place. This will connect to the PCM. This connects to power. Have our power on that will power up the PCM. And the next switch is the switched ignition power. So that's it for part one. So stay tuned for a moment, and here comes the image that shows you the wiring diagram. That should make it a lot more clear for you in case you weren't able to understand how I was describing it. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you in part two, and we're going to see how this baby works.